day, I look down upon the whole of Sasanami from Nathan Palace, and all I see is the chaos of mankind. Greetings everyone. In today's video, we will be taking a look at a special modifier from Korg's Major Crimes Division, the Lioness, Sekhmet. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. We release a complete guide every weekend before a new character is released for the global server. So if you would like to see more videos like this, a like rating would be greatly appreciated. We can all agree Ether Gazer is a fairly underrated game. Liking videos like this one will help creators reach more potential admins and grow our community. Thank you. The Lioness is a character that can be played in three different configurations. Option 1 is a DPS on red code, Option 2 is a physical support on yellow, and Option 3 on blue code, while niche, does provides armor break for her team, okay personal damage, and a small gathering effect on skill 2 cast. While in the DPS role, your main objective is simply divine grace generation, and using skill 3 to charge her special meter. Once full, holding down the attack input will consume the charges to deliver a powerful attack. Her skill 3 can put you in some pretty bad situations, but she does have a healing factor and many ways to negate incoming damage, so don't get too attached to the dodge skill while skill 3 is active. Her basic attack has 5 sequences and generates a set amount of divine grace on hit. Her dodge skill has no intrinsic effect, and will simply trigger zero time for three seconds. Skill 1, Lioness Pursuit, grants super armor, while latching onto the locked-on target with a grappling hook, dealing light physical damage as she catapults herself towards the locked-on target. This ability is able to block most forms of incoming damage, and successfully blocking an incoming attack, instantly reset the cooldown of Skill 3's Tear and Devour. In addition, skill 1 and 2 are changed into their variant forms on hit. Failure to grapple onto a target with this skill will shorten its cooldown by 50%. Skill 1's variant form, Mad Lion Sawtooth, sees her leap into the air before descending on the target with her saw blade, dealing massive physical damage. Skill 2 Saw Blade Rumble grants her unyielding while slamming the saw blade into the ground allowing the blades to freely roam around her before converging in an explosion, knocking her back. After casting skill 1, skill 2's variant form, saw blade dance becomes available, allowing her to spin the saw blade around her dealing physical damage to the surrounding targets. While using her red ether code, skill 2's variant form is altered and become available every time skill 2 or skill 3 are cast. On activation, the skill will trigger a small explosion, interrupting her current action and negate the incoming damage. Each time the base form of skill 1 or skill 2 hits, she gains a set amount of divine grace. Skill 3, Tear and Devour, aka The West Nile Slicer grants her super armor and unleashes the full power of the pizza cutter, continuously consume her divine grace as she mows down her foes. Enemies hit have their physical resistance lowered by up to 18%. In addition, as Divine Grace is consumed, she charges her Sunlight passive. When her Sunlight stacks is at 100 or greater, holding down the attack input will consume 100 stacks to deliver a devastating blow to the locked-on target. While on her red codes, the animation of this attack and the potency of its damage is drastically also improved. Her ultimate power of civilization activates a team-wide heal and grants the entire team the potential unleashed buff, increasing their physical damage dealt by 25% for 12 seconds. While Flowfly Miss Shu is in the party, their ultimate skill chain, Speed of a Lion, increases the team's resource charge rate by 25% and crit damage is increased by 25% each time a normal attack hits stacking up to three times for 20 seconds. In addition, the team gains the potential unleashed buff, have their HP restored, and gains a 20% skill damage boost for 12 seconds. And lastly, 
when an enemy is inflicted with armor break, she gains 8% of her ultimate charge. Although it seems she has quite a lot going on, Sekhmet is a fairly simple modifier to play. Both blue and yellow codes gameplay style are irrelevant, since in those configuration she is delegated to the AI, while on red code, all we have to do is generate divine grace. Cash them out with the pizza cutter to build our sunlight meter, which we will in turn use to activate her heavy attack nuke. Her basic attack, skill 1 base and skill 2 base, are the standard sources for divine grace generation. While using red code, blocking an incoming attack with skill 1 will instantly fill up her divine grace meter to full and reset skill 3's cooldown, making it indispensable to our kit. In addition to that, blocking an incoming attack with skill, 2 will reset skill 1's cooldown making divine grace generation, a walk in the park so long as you play into that aspect of her kit. Now that we have a better understanding of her abilities, here are three of the combos I like to use. For our first rotation, we can begin our encounter by instantly burning skill 1. This will trigger the first line of red code and increase her attack by 15%. From here, you can follow up with either skill 2 or skill 3, depending on your situation. The goal is simply to bait the enemy into attacking, so you can block the damage using skill 2's variant form, which will in turn reset skill 1's cooldown. Then activate skill 1 again and go into chainsaw massacre mode. Once you have a fully charged sunbar, Hold down the attack input to nuke the enemies into oblivion. For our next rotation, we begin with skill 1, followed by skill 3. Use skill 2 to detonate and negate any incoming damage. Use skill 1 to close the gap, followed by skill 2. Use skill 2 again to detonate and block any incoming attack, followed by skill 1 once more, followed by skill 3, and finish things off with your heavy attack nuke. Use basic attacks to fill in the gaps between skill uses. For our final combo, we can lead with skill 1, followed by 3 to detonate, followed by 1 to negate the incoming attack, and fully charge our Divine Grace into West Nile Slicer, into Heavy Attack Nuke. As you guys can see, there are a ton of options here. And since the red codes allow her skill to pretty much fuel each other, there is a lot of forgiveness in her playstyle. Yes, you have to be stationary while slicing your pepperoni pizza, but at the first sign of danger you can detonate skill 2 to negate any incoming damage and reset skill 1's cooldown, which you can in turn use to negate the next attack, fully fill your divine grace meter and resetting the cooldown of skill 3, so you can get back to slicing and dicing. Speaking of ether codes, 3 red is going to be our best in slot for a main DPS Sekhmet. I'm going to give you guys the TLDR for this one, but it will grant you a 15% attack buff on skill 1 hits, up to 24% boost to crit rate, 30% boost to crit damage. Skill 1 and 2's original variant forms are replaced with the detonations form of skill 2 whose damage scales of skill 2's level, and successfully blocking damage with the detonations will reduce the skill's cooldown by 50%. The heavy attacks that became available, when her sunlight stacks are at 100+, plus, gets a stronger alternate variant, whose damage can be further increased by raising skill 3's level. Lastly, when you are in close proximity to the enemy, skill 1's grappling ability is replaced with the fifth sequence of your basic attack to quickly knock back the surrounding foes. Yellow Code is going to be our best in slot for support on a physical team. It will provide a 15% armor break on skill hits, increase the maximum Divine Grace limit by 25. Potential Unleash will no longer apply to the team, but instead be applied to the physical character with the highest attack, providing a 30% physical damage boost and a 70% crit damage boost for 15 seconds. Blue Code provides a 10% armor break, 20% skill damage boost, 2 second cooldown reduction to skill 1, and a light gathering effect on skill 2. You can run this line if you want to use her as an AI on a non-physical team, but her damage will be better as an AI on Red Code, 
So unless you really want that armour break for the rest of your team, I would ignore this line. When it comes to functors, Pharaoh Yuzakaf is a serviceable option. She's definitely not going to make the best use of that passive, but our Nile functors are copium enough for it to be one of her better options. The four-star Pharaoh Thutmose is also an okay choice, and will reward you for your skill issues. Its base stats are lower than the free-to-play functor, so use it as a placeholder at best. Her signature functor, Pharaoh Semaket, is to no one's surprise her best in slot. It will reset the cooldown of skill 3 and fill her Divine Grace meter to full instantly upon entering modifier mode. Increase the potency of skill 3's physical resistance shred from 18% to 30% at max stacks. Increase the potency of her heavy attack by 16% and increase the team's crit rate by 10%. The new battle cry of the Wild Sands is a set made specifically to debuff the enemy's physical resistance. When a physical attack hits, it will reduce the enemy's physical resistance by 10% for 8 seconds. When a physical skill hits, crit rate of the entire team is increased by 8% for 12 seconds. We want to slot these on slots 1, 3 and 5 for 2, 4 and 6. Acheron's Obol will grant you up to 9% attack boost when you gain Divine Grace and up to 36% crit damage when you consume Divine Grace. She constantly generate and expends Divine Grace, so keeping these buffs active should be a walk in the park for her. As for enchantments, the standard attack, crit rate, crit damage and loopbacks are the ones to keep an eye on. Warps gives you the freedom to personalise your characters in a way that best fits your playstyle, as such the ones I recommend may not be the best ones for you, but if you want my recommendations, they are as follows. For slots 1 and 2, we want 2 power-up melee, 1 judge and 1 executioner. For 3 and 4, we want 2 telepathize force field ones and 2 EM flux. While in a party with her skill chain partner, you can replace the telepathize force fields with 2 unfetters. For 5 and 6, we want 2 Evolution Particle 3 and 2 Telekinesis Vector 3 for Red Code, or 2 Armor Breakers and 2 Divine Senses for Yellow Code. After years of being trapped in the basement, Shu Mains can finally take the stage. Your third in this team can be Ling, Hera, Okuni, or Heimdall. Here is the setup for my Shu, and we're run segment on Red Code. You could also throw Athena into this comp, and just use all three in their DPS configs. For a dedicated physical setup, Athena with the same supports I mentioned before are viable here as well. Unless your Athena have her signature functor, it might be a good idea to just leave Sekment on her red code configuration, because her damage will be better than the current version of Athena. Our next comp is absolutely beautiful. I mean, take a really good look at this one, guys. We have Little Caesars on the left, Papa John's on the right, and Domino's on mid. I guess you could literally say, this team cooks. Look at what happens if I put Little Caesars on the left side. Where did he go? Where did he? Newer players can run the budget physical team with Cooney and A rank Buzenbo, or with Vathandi and Osiris. Her best teammate is currently not available. However, when she does make her appearance, the two of them will become the strongest duel in the game. So, if you were somehow on the fence about this character, just know, simply referring to her as a meta character is in itself an understatement. <laughs> Do you
你心软弱，将自己伸出援手，伸出援手。清楚，我们最初所来处还藏着。